Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I take pleasure in welcoming you all to discuss the operating and financial performance for the fourth quarter and year ended March 2024. However, before we proceed, I am very pleased to welcome Mr. Kailash Gupta as the company's group CFO. Kailash brings over 25 years of experience across various financial disciplines, including business strategy, investor relations, M&A, financial planning and analysis, treasury and taxation, to name a few. Most recently, Kailash served as uh, the CFO at Inox Leisure Limited for eight years, leading their financial and commercial operations. He played a key role in the merger of Inox with PVR Limited. Prior to Inox, Kailash held significant positions at the Torrent Pharma Entertainment Network, Thomas Cook, Tata Tele Services, and the Aditya Birla Group. Kailash is a qualified chartered accountant uh, from the batch of 1995 with a well-proven track record. He has received several accolades, including the CACFO Award for Media and Entertainment Industry from the ICAI, and was also recognized as one of Asia's 100 power leaders in finance by White Page International. We're confident that his expertise will be instrumental in our continued growth and performance. I will now take you through the key highlights of the results with reference to the relevant slides of the results presentation. If I may draw your attention to slide three. Starting off with a quick overview of the retail business. FY24 has been a milestone year for the business at the start of this financial year, we had set sights on stabilizing the four new malls and driving growth across the existing operational assets. I'm very pleased to report that we had a strong operating performance across most centers and consumption or retailer sales at our malls for the year closed at rupees 11,344 crore, up 23% year on year. Moving on to slide four. This slide provides a breakup of the performance and highlights the contribution from new malls during FY24. EBITDA from the retail business for the full year came in at rupees 1,672 crore, up 25% year on year. Overall existing operational malls saw full year rental income and EBITDA growing at about 6% and 7% respectively. EBITDA margin as a percentage of rental income is at a healthy 104% of rental income. New malls contributed approximately 295 crore in rental income and approximately 256 crore in EBITDA for FY24. EBITDA margin as a percentage of rental income is lower in new malls during the initial period of occupancy ramp up. However, going forward in FY25, EBITDA margins from new malls should start moving towards the margins we see for our existing operational malls as these malls stabilize. Let's go to slide five. We are seeing a fast ramp up in the trading occupancy at our newly launched malls. Phoenix Citadel Indoor launched in December 2022, crossed 90% occupancy levels within 12 months of launch and has been trading at a stable 91% occupancy still since then. Palladium Ahmedabad launched in February 2023. This is on slide six. It's already trading at 86%. In fact, the multiplex at Ahmedabad is ready and once we obtain the occupation certificate, the multiplex will commence operations and the occupancy level will cross 94%. Moving on to slide seven, Phoenix Mall of the Millennium at Pune opened up, opened in September 2023 and is already trading at 77% occupancy levels within eight months of opening. And on slide eight, last but not the least, Phoenix Mall of Asia at Bangalore launched in October 2023 and is already at 67% occupancy levels within six months of opening. Let's take a look at slide 10. As we have noted earlier, total consumption in FY24 was at rupees 11,344 crore approximately demonstrating a year-on-year -year growth of 23% over FY23. On a like-to-like -like basis, consumption in FY24 grew by 8% over 
over FY23, led by strong double-digit growth in Phoenix Market City and Palladium Chennai, Phoenix Market City Mumbai uh, at Kurla, and Phoenix Palacio Lucknow. Phoenix Palladium reported a growth of 4%, but if adjusted for the loss of contribution for, from the lifestyle store, it reported consumption growth will be approximately 9% on a like-to-like -like basis. As you may all be aware, we have sh shut down that store and demolished that structure as per our revised approval plans to provide a spectacular entry and arrival experience and better circulation for the ever-growing iconic Phoenix Palladium development. Gross retail collections for the period were approximately 2,743 crore, up 27% over FY23. Slide 11 shows total consumption in quarter 4 FY24 was at approximately 2,833 crore, up 28% year on year, and on a like to like basis grew by 10% over Q4 FY23. This is excluding the new malls which were launched in the end of uh, calendar year 23. Uh, slide 12 provides an overview of the category-wise consumption performance across our malls on a like-to-like -like basis. Moving on to slide 13, rental income for the quarter grew by 31% over Q4 FY23, driven by strong performances from Phoenix Market City, Pune, Phoenix Market Cities in Mumbai, Chennai, and Phoenix Palacio, Lucknow. The rental income performance is reflected in the EBITDA performance as well, and on slide 14, it demonstrates a growth of 28% over Q4 FY23. Drawing your attention to slides 15 and 16, since we have discussed the FY24 retail income and EBITDA performance, I will skip through these slides and go to the occupancy overview across major malls on slide 17. Weighted average leased occupancy across major malls stood at 97% and trading occupancy at 88%. Moving on to the commercial office section, which is on slide 18, we have taken significant strides towards cementing our presence in this asset class as well. Slide 19 demonstrates that for FY24, total income from the office business was approximately 190 crore with an EBITDA of approximately 110 crore, depicting a growth of 12 and 13% respectively over FY23. FY24 gross leasing has been over half a million square feet, out of which approximately 3.6 lakh square feet is new leasing and 1.7 lakh square feet is renewal. Slide number 20, occupancy in our operational portfolio of Mumbai and Pune has increased to 70% at the end of FY24, uh, up from 63% last year, while maintaining healthy gross rental levels. On slides 21 and 22, in line with the performance in FY24, income from the office business in Q4 FY24 was at 49 crore, up 13% compared to the same quarter last year. And EBITDA was rupees 30 crore, up 12% over Q4 FY23. We are hopeful to continue this momentum with the launch of best-in-class benchmark setting, setting new age commercial office assets at uh, Bangalore, uh, Pune, and Chennai in 2024, where we have seen keen interest from prospective clients. Uh, moving on to slide number 23 and the uh, hotel assets, we continue to see positive trends in the hospitality segment with double digit growth in ERRs along with high occupancy levels in both of our operational hotels. Slide 24 shows that our marquee destination, the St. Regis, Mumbai, we have seen a remarkable ARR level at more than 21,000 in Q4 FY24. 
Even for the full year of FY24, there has been a notable increase of 23% in room rates while maintaining above 80% occupancy throughout the year. Coming to the operational performance shown on slide 25, St. Regis continues to reach new heights and has clocked total income of over 490 crore with EBITDA of approximately 223 crore representing an EBITDA, uh, impressive EBITDA margin of 46%. Slides 26 and 27, moving on to the courtyard by Marriott at Agra. We have seen double-digit uh, ARR growth throughout the year with occupancy levels close to 80%. Uh, the operational performance, uh, this asset has clocked a total income of 55 crore with EBITDA of 16 crore and healthy margins of 29%. Let's move to the residential business, which is on slide 28 and onwards. Uh, we've had another remarkable year during FY24. Uh, slide 29 and 30 showed a strong demand and fast conversion, which where we've seen gross sales of approximately 566 crore, and we've collected 646 crore during FY24. Also, we are happy to report that we have received the occupation certificate for Tower 7 at One Bangalore West. Accordingly, basis uh, sale of the completed inventory and on receipt of OC of uh, Tower 7, we have recognized revenue of 870 crore for FY24 and 454 crore during this quarter, during the last quarter. Moving on to the financial results for the quarter and year ended uh, 31st March 2024. This is on slide 31 and onwards. Uh, slide 32 shows uh, the standalone PNL, which houses Phoenix Palladium Mumbai and a very small component of offices uh, Phoenix House. Income from operations for Q4 FY24 and full year FY24 have been slightly lower than Q4 FY23 and full year FY23 as well, uh, mainly on account of ongoing enhancements to the overall uh, layout uh, where we have uh, vacated and demolished the structure which uh, housed uh, life, the lifestyle store previously uh, and uh, that has had an impact both on consumption and on our rental incomes. Uh, without spending too much time on the standalone balance sheet, we will move on to the consolidate performance. Uh, on slide number 34, with addition of uh, new operational assets and momentum in leasing and occupancy, our income from operations for Q4 FY24 is higher by almost 80% compared to Q4 FY23. For the full year of FY24, income from operations is higher by about 50% compared to FY23. I would like to mention at this point that in FY24, we have booked 870 crore of revenue in our residential business, which has been added to this, and this demonstrates a boost in the top line. On our operating EBITDA metrics, for the full year FY24, we have reported 2,185 crore, with an increase of 44% over FY23. This momentum has been seen quarter on quarter with Q4 FY24 clocking 46% growth in operating EBITDA over Q4 FY23. Profit after tax after adjustment of uh, minority interest and exceptional items, which was rupees 1,152 crore for FY24, grew by over 60% over FY23. Let's move on to the consolidated balance sheet, which has gran granular numbers. Uh, slide number 36. Our consolidated debt as on 31st March 24 is rupees 4,366 crore with an average cost of roughly 8.8%. Uh, let's uh, draw your attention to slides 37 and 38. On the consolidated cash flows front, we have crossed the milestone of rupees 2000 crore and generated net cash flow from operations of rupees 2162 crore net of taxes. We have reinvested considerable amount of this cash flow through capital expenditure across assets under development, 
and one land acquisition during the year in total aggregating about 1670 crore so for perspective after removing interest paid to service the existing debt our operating free cash flow net of taxes and interest is about 1781 crore for fy24 which is 27% higher than last year uh slide 39 and slide 40 so our group level net debt position has remained close to rupees 2200 crore as majority of our capex has been funded by operational cash flows uh pml level net debt position has improved with net debt of 1560 crore as on 31st march 2024 uh let's move on to slide 41 Last month in April we have acquired 6.6 acres of land adjacent to Phoenix Market City Bangalore at a cost of about 230 crore. This has been acquired through a joint venture with the uh, Canada Pension Plan and will add to the overall footprint and development potential, accessibility and experience for our destination retail led mixed use development Phoenix Market City located near on Whitefield Road in Bangalore. on slide 42 we have a clear road map of where we intend to be by 2027 we aim to have an operational portfolio of about 14 million square feet of retail 7 million square feet of offices close to 1000 keys in hotels and add another million square feet to our residential development uh, these are all projects which are already underway Uh, have uh, lands have been acquired and uh, we may be under construction or de- uh, at design development stage as we have seen on the earlier slide we are busy charting our growth beyond 2027 and have added to our development mix through land acquisitions at thane and bangalore and we continue to evaluate and work on opportunities uh, selectively to add to our growing portfolio uh, moving on to sustainability slides 43 and 44 uh sustainability is very important uh, focus for our company as we grow we are committed to doing so responsibly and here's how we are ramping up our use of renewable power across our entire portfolio aiming for over 70% all our new buildings are targeted to be LEED certified ensuring they are environmentally friendly and efficient we are already making strides on this front with one third of our existing retail buildings uh, one third by gla are already certi- certified with a usg bc leed certification this brings me to the end of our operational and financial performance update and we can now be open for questions thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star in one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star in two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for the moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Parishik Kanpal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Parishik, uh, congratulations on a great quarter, sir. Parishik, uh, 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 my first question is on the same store growth of eight percent. So, if you can help us understand uh, a little bit more on how has been the trading occupancy impact on this eight uh, percent volume growth and inflation. Thanks for the question, uh, Parikshit. Let me try and answer it to the best of my abilities. Uh, if you if you look at our operating assets, several of our Phoenix market cities continue to be at the lag end of you know the uh, tenure with uh, anchors. So, for example, Phoenix market city Bangalore and uh, Phoenix market city Mumbai at uh, are about uh, uh, phoenix market city pune both 
have anchor space which is about more than 52%. Uh, during the cycle of, a, of the mall's uh, life or the tenure of the contracts, we continue to see opportunities to make these malls more efficient. What I mean by that is moving away from being anchor heavy, depending on where you are in you know, the life of that mall, what the customer aspirations are, and bringing in a new brand mix and perhaps new categories. So we did this in Phoenix Market City, Mumbai, and we've seen a significant, you know, I would say in one, one and a half years, the numbers have played out and they demonstrate how the strategy has worked for us. So in, in, in several of our malls, we are now seeing that opportunity again in the next year and maybe year and a half. Uh, so that strategy will help boost consumption. So it's always important to refresh the category mix and brand mix. Uh, I think we took some hit uh, at lower parade, as I mentioned uh, during my notes. Uh, during my opening remarks that uh, with the lifestyle block being, uh, you know, which generated close to 25, 27 crore annual rent uh, and significant consumption, uh, we saw a drop in consumption and rent because the lifestyle block was uh, located and demolished to create a better experience for the ongoing developer. Uh, we are doing some fantastic work at uh, Phoenix Palladium, Mumbai in expansion. Uh, there is a host of new brands that we are in discussions with. Uh, these are definitely going to, you know, aid in improving both consumption and overall rental income for us. So it's, I don't think uh, we are seeing any structural issue here, which is causing a consumption, uh, you know, to, uh, let's say, be, be, be at a stable, consistent level or uh, show not demonstrate great growth. I think it's every mall in its life is, uh, you know, has this, uh, has this opportunity of improvements every three to five years, and that's where we are in, with several of our malls. So I think we're going to see this getting better. So any guidance for next year, what kind of things to see if growth you're looking at? Sorry, Parikh, so can you repeat it? What you're saying? So for these uh, for these malls which are like operational, uh, like to like basis, what kind of growth do you think we can uh, forecast for FI25 versus eight percent? We have reported this year. See, I don't want to. I I don't think it's fair to talk about FI25 alone. I would say one has to always look at a three year CAGR and a three to five year CAGR. And over a three to five year CAGR, I would I would estimate anywhere between eleven. 12% kind of a growth. Okay. okay. So my second question is on Thane. So um, and you have acquired the land parcel. So uh, any plans like what have you decided to do there? Uh, one of your competitors coming up with a hotel on uh, 560 odd rooms. Please. So any plans? I mean, what are you looking to add there? Do there in terms of uh, you can help us in the mix understand where we commercial hospitality is. What do you intend to do there? Yeah, I think um, uh, well, we've not uh, we don't we're not ready to announce what we're doing there yet because it's still not concluded. Uh, so we're going to take uh, probably another two three months to perhaps decide. Uh, but it's seeming to be a, a, a large mixed use development with a combination of uh, maybe some retail, some hotel. We are trying to really determine if uh, Resi is the right way to go. I think that's where the question really is, what's the best use on this land? So we will be very, very happy to announce as soon as we've taken a decision. Okay. So this last thing on the residential piece, um, so now we have, uh, and I think we are increasing our uh, overall developable area there by 527. So, so what kind of pre-phase number do you think we can achieve on a more consistent and a steady basis so that that portfolio gives more visibility on growth. So we didn't have any major launches besides the Bangalore one. I think mean, Alipur is still awaited. So, so how do you intend to build that portfolio over the next three, four years? And what kind of pieces do you think you can achieve in that segment in three years' time? More on the roadmap of, of three years, next three years. With Calcutta, we've secured the major approvals. This is going to be about a million odd square feet of uh, saleable area. 
right? Uh, we are waiting, uh, we've applied for EC, so we are in the process of getting the approvals. I think we may be about six, maybe may about six to eight months away from launch on this asset, okay? Uh, the micro market there seems to be very, very strong and stable. Uh, our primary primary research is showing rate, rates in that micro market to be in excess of about uh, 18, 20,000. Uh, we've already decided on what the product mix is going to be like in terms of um, you know the sizing of the apartments, configuration, etc. Uh, we have about 350 to 400 crores as our target in this year to sell the ready inventory which we have in Bangalore between uh, One Bangalore West and Kesaku. Uh, so I think uh, that's a great target for us to chase another 400 crore uh, this year. Uh, I, we have uh, total ready inventory is about 1200 crore of which in this year we've target we're targeting about 400 uh, we might we we we'll certainly work harder to then you know to d deliver more than our target uh, we've taken some price hikes and the market has also accepted that well and we're selling at about 24000 rupees per square foot plus plus compared to 15,000 plus plus in 2019. Uh, I think this would be our guidance for FY25 that we're targeting to get about, in, in to sell about 400 crore. Okay, and more on the longer term, like uh, three, four years, what kind of sales can this segment do for us, like residential? Can we reach that 2,000 crore number with addition of more projects over the next two years? Uh, so currently we don't have any we don't have any active uh, uh, plans on uh, expanding on re uh, residential for example uh, we're not in any race to become you know a, a large residential developer we are being very selective about the opportunities and depending on you know the value at which we are able to buy land in mature, stable markets where absorption has been consistent, we will continue to look at those opportunities. But I can clarify that today we are not actively looking at any residential growth, new projects. Okay, sir. Sure. Thank you. And I wish you all the best. Those are my questions. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Praveen Chaudhary from Morgay Standard. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks so much for taking my call and uh, congratulations on a very, very good result. Um, hi, Shirish. Um, Shishir, just a quick question for me. Um, can you talk about the competition in tier one existing cities where you already have malls in terms of are you finding, considering how good this business has been, a credible competition coming in? And the second question is on tier two cities. Um, the return on invested capital, how are you thinking about it as you're going into newer cities? Um, so far, you have obviously achieved that, but are you finding that uh, you may not be or, or you need to slow down if the returns are coming slower? How are you thinking about it is the question. Thank you. Thanks, Ravi. Uh, so let's talk about Tier 1 cities and competition in Tier 1 cities. Uh, see, the we've seen a significant, I would say, we we, are, we continue to see a good growth of in 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 our numbers in tier one cities. Uh, it's a great business to be in, but it also requires a I think a very large uh, team, a lot of effort. Land has become very expensive, and especially in the locations where our malls are land has become very expensive. So I think there are many uh, factors which dis which deter competition. Uh, we are conscious of the fact that there can be competition. Anybody can come into the market. So our focus is on creating such experiential centers which become dominant consumption centers. And uh, I think with that approach, uh, we continue to stay a little ahead of the game here. Uh, we don't see other developers building malls around our locations at present in any of the markets where we are. And uh, we will continue to innovate, get bigger, better where we are. So, you know, that we are just always established as a dominant uh, center. 
Uh, your second question was return on capital invested in tier two cities. In fact, I must say that uh, return on capital ha in percentage terms, I would say, have been even better than tier one. Um, you know, because these are not really, they may be tier two cities, but they are tier one opportunities. Uh, case in example, Lucknow, within six years of acquisition, we are seeing an yield on cost of about 17% and growing every year. And uh, Indore, Ahmedabad, these also look to be very, 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 very promising. Uh, we are very keen to, you know, work, uh, go ahead full steam on our project at Surat and it's progressing fast. We expect to see the same story that play out in uh, Lucknow, uh, played out in Lucknow to also play out in Surat, which is a great market to be in. Uh, Ahmedabad, I would like to say that in the first full year of operations, our yield has exceeded 14%. So that's great. Thank you. That totally makes sense. I did uh, go to your Ahmedabad mall. It, it's it's actually fantastic. Um, I have one more question, if it's okay. Uh, I was looking at uh, your slide number 12, and you have category-wise growth in your consumption. So you look at electronics showing minus 1% or others showing 3%, food and beverage slightly lower. Um, how are you thinking about it? Of course, you can't have a mall which has zero percentage of these categories, but how do you ensure that you keep pruning it and uh, improving that trade mix? Thank you. Yeah, that's, I think, uh, you know, pruning and correcting the category mix and the brand mix, I think this is uh, very routine for us. This is how we manage our retail business. It's something that we do, I think, virtually every day, right? Uh, looking at electronics specifically, I think it's a blip for that one year. And I would think uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, uh, interestingly, last year we did an electronics fest, which really, really worked well. I think uh, this was done in uh, Bangalore and uh, Chennai, and we saw great turnout for that. So there are these marketing initiatives that we create for specific categories to boost their sales, and uh, we are not seeing electronics really uh, not getting customers. It's not like you know customers have moved away from uh, from uh, uh, coming into physical stores and started ordering online to the extent that will impact these uh, physical stores. Uh, according, I, I think we we remain uh, we remain very vigilant on the performance of each of the categories, and we continue to take corrective action, be it marketing, be it engaging with them, launching some kind of a special. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about FNB. FNB in our newer malls, we've significantly increased the percentage of uh, gross usable area occupied by FNB. Uh, in the new malls, we may be in about 15, 16% range for FNB alone, and then you add that uh, you know family entertainment centers, multiplex and entertainment options, you're inching closer to about 30%. This is a, is a very, I would say, strategic shift where FNB and entertainment would earlier occupy cumulatively about 15%. Now we are inching closer to about 30%. Uh, even in our new uh, existing malls, we are working on an upgrade to revamp, uplift the FNB brands and the options. Right? So uh, I think this drives uh, the relevant profile of the customer also to the mall and drives overall consumption. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashir, and uh, congratulations. This is indeed uh, very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your question to two questions per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, I request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Kunal Lakhan from CLSA. Can I please go ahead. Oh, yes. Question, but... Yeah. 
Yeah, my first question was on, uh, you know, what is the development plan for the uh, 6.6 acres of land that we have bought uh, in Bangalore? Hi, Kunal. Uh, you know, this, uh, this land is uh, adjacent to our existing Phoenix Market City development, and uh, which, is, uh, which sits under the joint venture with CPP, uh, an SPV called Island Star. So now this is exactly adjacent to that. We have the ability, we are looking at the, how we can uh, amalgamate the two, two land parcels and uh, you know, be able to utilize the de overall development mix in a composite manner. Uh, so it has a, I would say the land parcel has a development potential including TDR of about 1.3, 1.4 million square feet. Uh, we have at our existing development, we have a development potential including TDR of 3 million square feet. And we are expanding the existing mall and uh, existing mall development. As you are aware, we are adding a 400 room hotel, Grand Hyatt. We have plans to add about a million odd square feet of uh, offices. So. This acquisition will help us create a much larger destination uh, with more, perhaps more retail uh, and more entertainment and F&B uh, options. Uh, and we also have the ability to evaluate a standalone resi development should we want to take that up. Uh, the rates seem to be fairly reasonable in that area, I mean viable in that area, profitable in that area and in the range of about 15,000 rupees a square foot. So that is also under consideration. Uh, we are working on several options now. Um, we've, since we've recently acquired this, I think we may be about two quarters away from deciding how we want to proceed with that, with the development here. Um, sure, uh, just, uh, I mean, just a few thoughts there. I mean, generally this is very, uh, Kind of uncharacteristic of us, right? In terms of like, you know, we, uh, you know, in in the past we've generally been very clear about like, you know, what we want to do, and then we, in fact, like we paid top dollar and bought land and built malls, and you know, those malls have been like pretty strong in terms of profitability and return. Uh, whereas this is like, you know, this again like very similar to what we are doing in Thane also, where we we have bought land, but we are not sure what we are going to build over there. Um, any change in the thought process or strategic, uh, you know, thinking that, you know, versus what we used to be doing in the past uh, versus what we are doing today? Yeah, so with uh, this Bangalore 6.6 .6 acres, it was an opportunity that we, we had to close very fast. It came up mm -hmm. in, our, in our discussions with the landowners and we didn't really get an opportunity to deep dive into finalizing a development mix. Of course, we, we ran our numbers basis and a base case, but we are trying to see how we can improve on that base case. And it's a little complex because it's an, it's an, it, the property is immediately adjacent from us, adjacent to us. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this existing mall. We are already constructing, you know, the multi-level car park and the office uh, towers on top of that, which are closer to the boundary of this adjacent uh, land parcel. So we are trying to figure out what is the most efficient and I would say what is going to be the best experience for a customer here in terms of circulation, et cetera. So it, it will undergo a little bit of, you know, some, it, it, it requires a lot of thought. Uh, but nevertheless, we feel that it's a huge, huge value add to this development. The ability to add another 1.3, 1.4 million square feet to this development, perhaps even going up higher, is a huge value add to our overall destination. Sure, sure. Uh, just one follow-up on that is, you know, uh, in terms of like, you know, we are looking at like, let me give an example of Bangalore also, that you may look at adding some retail space also over there. And we are already doing some expansion at uh, the Palladium Mumbai in terms of retail space. You know, our, our earlier strategy was like, you know, build these, like, like 1 million square feet of retail was like the sweet spot. 
uh, but you you think that that thing is changing now? Like you know, like there is potential of building larger scale malls, uh, and we are seeing that with some of your competitors also who are building like huge malls, uh, in, especially in North. No, absolutely. We I think uh, you know the sweet spot has moved up simply because of the demand from uh, retail brands and so many new global brands entering into the country. Uh, it's becoming. I think the sweet spot now is closer to about 1.4, 1.5 million square feet, and uh, that's the goal of our expansions across all locations where we have malls operating and also the new malls that we're building. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask question. The next question is from the line of Parvez Ghazi from Noama Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, congrats for the great set of numbers. Uh, two questions from my side. Uh, first, in terms of our trading occupancy, which uh, currently is at about 88%, uh, would it be fair to assume that, let's say, by the end of FY25, this number would have moved to somewhere closer to the mid 90s at the portfolio level? Oh yeah, absolutely. Because there are so many deals done and concluded and under various stages of out, I, I think we should be in 95-96% range. Sure. Uh, and my second question is regarding uh, the our various uh, office assets. Uh, would be great if you could uh, uh, tell us about the status of the construction there and when do we expect the various assets to become office? Thank you. Asia Towers Bangalore is uh, nearly complete. We are waiting for the OC, and uh, we should be able to uh, commence operations immediately thereafter. Uh, Phoenix Millennium Towers at uh, Pune, Wakad, uh, these will be ready by the end of this year, calendar year. Uh, Chennai as well. So we we are estimating within the next six months both of these uh, at least phase one of uh, Millennium Towers Pune will be ready before the end of this calendar year, uh, which will be about uh, half a million square feet. Uh, Chennai half a million square feet should be ready by the end of this uh, this uh, calendar year. The offices that we are building in Mumbai as uh, part of our flagship development at Lower Parel. Uh, we expect this to be completed sometime uh, in FY27. And uh, and uh, yes, at uh, Bangalore, the million odd, uh, about 400,000 square feet of new offices at Phoenix Market City, Bangalore on Whitefield Road should be ready by 2026, calendar year 26. Got it. Uh, and uh, I mean, apart from the two acquisitions that we have uh, done in Thane and Bangalore, uh, how is our business development, etc., plans for new retail asset development, whether in tier one or tier two cities? Probably. I think uh, there are there are probably two more real transactions that we are currently pursuing, and we should be able to conclude them in this uh, calendar year. So that that would add uh, maybe another two two and a half million to our portfolio in the next four years or four to five years. I had uh, previously guided to closing four to five transactions within 24 months. Uh, this was in the last quarter call. I think uh, the Bangalore acquisition was the first one, and there are two more which are underway. So I think uh, give us a couple of quarters to be able to announce more. Yes. Uh, thanks and all the rest. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Atul Mehra from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good morning and uh, congratulations on the result. Uh, my question is in terms of uh, the retail uh, expansion. So uh, I think in the presentation we've spoken about 11 going to 15. Um, okay. So, uh, the question was in terms of given our very successful in terms of uh, response so far on that, and the bar and like now you spoke about, 
can we look at the next two to three years to build a very very large pipeline like the targeting 20 million plus in detail because what tends to happen is every every city will tend to have a potential destination which will prosper over the next decade right and if, if we don't take that opportunity uh, some of our competitors might go in there and which would mean that uh, once they have an established asset it it would not give us that opportunity because obviously like there is a limit to how much large space a city can absorb so structurally uh, given also that we have a very strong balance sheet today and cash flows are very strong can we look at stepping up the growth agenda on retail uh i think uh, atul if the estimate is to hit about to have a pipeline to target about 20 million square feet in the next few years i think of course uh we are already at 14 million square feet uh with the with the with the two three acquisitions that we are considering right now plus the development at thane plus the extensive expansion that we're doing everywhere i think we'll hit that 20 million much sooner right 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 and we continue to we continue to look for opportunities uh, selectively selectively in key markets so like i mentioned to you i i don't know if you remember this but way back in 2017 we had told you what our portfolio is going to be we're going mm. to be at 15 million square feet by 2023 end and we're going to make sure that we add another million square feet every year so we are very i think we we're well on track of delivering that and perhaps more right got it that's good to know and now we're shifting gears also of course mm-hmm. we're going to be very selective but uh, we mm-hmm. are looking at each development being that one and a half million plus you know so as i mentioned uh, in my response to uh, yeah the previous question right and 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 fourth like when you're looking at uh, setting up uh, is the template going to be one and a half million for all new assets that you look to acquire or it depends on like like we've done in the past the phase wise development and uh maybe looking at building on assets at a later stage it depends on see now when we acquire land mostly the sizing is such that you have the ability to develop much more even you know the development regulations in all cities have have changed the fsi available is more uh, but depending on the demand in any particular market we will uh, decide on the size and we always have the opportunity for future expansion which we plan for right up front so the new development in bangalore for example is and and which is a mall of asia uh pune mall of the millennium hmm. we have also completed uh, you know we're building mall we're building the mall and office at the same time so earlier we used to build the mall then wait a few years but because the market was is ready at these locations for the office asset class we've decided to go ahead up front hmm. so it's going to be customized but yeah the sweet spot for retail in tier 1 is uh, definitely about a million and a half we will uh, but depending if we for example if we look at a smaller town we may not choose to build a million half up front we may build only 800000 and then keep a second phase development potential right right got it got it great and thanks and all the best thank you thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of prem kurana from anand raji please go ahead Yeah, thank you for taking my question. So, uh, so I mean, uh, I mean, just if you talk about the indoor asset and uh, in, in detail, because I mean, in terms of trading density, seems to be uh, not there. I mean, I mean, generally when I compare with most of these other assets that we have, and most of these assets would be closer to thousand or rupees sort of number on trading density side. I mean, I mean like of Lucknow and the recently commissioned Pune and all. But this is more closer to 600 or so. Are we happy with this number, or is it is it in line with your expectation, or am I slightly lagging your expectation? Okay, I would think that overall, uh, what we have underwritten when we acquired this land, in terms of rental income, I think we are uh, we are probably there already, almost there. 
uh, in terms of trading density, 600 rupees per square foot per month, you're right. But then uh, we must also understand that the retailer's cost is lower because rentals are lower. So if you look at the occupancy cost compared to a mall which is at 2,000, 2,300 rupees compared to indoor which is at 600, the so occupancy cost is much lower. Uh, then, yes, there is a lot of effort to be put into, uh, it's already established I would say as a great uh, destination, but we have to put in a lot more effort in bringing in great F&B options and driving driving other you know marketing activities etc to drive the right profile of customer there uh, rent is averaging as i mentioned earlier at these malls at about at this mall at about 79 rupees all the other malls are averaging at about 150 or even higher uh, hmm. so for our model what we've spent in acquisition and uh, uh, incremental cost of construction at 750 crore, uh, I think we are already at an EBITDA of about uh, 85, 86 crore for the year. So this is a 11% yield, and we are quite confident it will take maybe it will take another two quarters for the, you know, for our uh, strategy to play out and for the consumption to start growing here. Sure. So I think, I mean, in terms of monthly rental rate that you're charging, I mean, I agree uh, it's lower in some of these other malls, but I mean, if I were to look at from, so essentially when I look at a retailer, I mean, they tend to have their cost structures in place. I mean, how much do they intend to share with you in terms of scam and rental rate? And I mean, what would you believe is the ideal number for these guys? I mean, for, 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 for example, I mean, for Indoor, it works out to be 20 odd percent sort of number. Uh, Palladium, I can understand it's a destination of sorts. People would be willing to pay you more than 20 to 25% just to be able to have presence there. But generally speaking, whenever you're evaluating, what sort of number do you tend to kind of bake in into your estimates to understand whether the, the, the mall would find takers or not? Hi, Prem. What on the side? Yeah, so, taking that question on uh, indoor, I think, you know, uh, one thing that does not come out when you look at a retain mall is the tenant mix that you have with each center. So indoor, for example, has today lower anchor area than what you would see even in a Kurra or a Pune or a Bangalore, and that has been a very conscious strategy. Driving more inline centers and creating more space for F&B and family entertainment centers actually drives a stickier profile of the uh, grade A consumers that we are targeting. And because the anchor area is lower in area and indoor, cost of occupancy can actually be higher than what you may see for you know established uh, centers like a Phoenix Market City in a Bangalore or a Pune or Chennai, which are at about 13-14% rent to consumption. Sure. sure. Thank you. And that is my all very best future. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mohit Agarwal from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks and congratulations to the team for a great performance. Uh, my first question is, uh, you know, you talked about Tier 1 uh, malls. So j just for your expansion in Tier 1 metro cities, uh, we have so far taken the greenfield route for uh, constructing new malls, but for given the land availability issue, would you be open to or have you considered uh, exploring the brownfield or acquiring existing malls and turning them around? And would your valuation expectations be very different <clears throat> Different when you're acquiring a brownfield mall? So that's my first question. Yeah, I think, um, you know, generally we look at greenfield developments uh, resulting in a stabilized yield let's say in the third year or fourth year of operation, we look at trying to be closer to 18, 19% kind of a yield on cost. Uh, so that's why, where, you know, we find uh, the real value for us. Uh, buying operational malls, A, the opportunities are very, very few because uh, there aren't too many great malls that meet our specs uh, for us to acquire. Uh, we are always open to acquiring brownfield assets. Uh, brownfield assets also, our experience with, uh, let's say, a Lucknow has been fantastic. 
uh, where we acquired it at a great price and we were take, able to take it to completion in a very short span of time and make the mall operational. So we are open to brownfield. Greenfield is clearly what we do. Uh, operating malls, as I mentioned, there aren't too many assets that we can look to buy. The ones which are which were available for sale have already been purchased by several of the funds, as you know, or the REITs. Uh, and the returns are very, very low. So that's really not our principal strategy. Okay, understood. Uh, that's clear. And secondly, on the commercial bid, you gave timelines on the completion. So between uh, Bangalore, uh, uh, Millennium Towers, and Chennai, in the next six months, we have almost uh, roughly about one and a half to two million square feet of space coming up. Uh, what is the leasing pipeline looking like in, in these assets? So this is about 1.6 million square feet. Uh, yeah. We have uh, started the soft leasing at uh, Asia Towers, Bangalore. And uh, I think we have there's uh, been a lot of interest. We've seen, it, despite North Bangalore being a slightly soft market, we've seen a lot of uh, inquiries and interest in this asset. Uh, I think we'll see a great traction as we get our OC in place in in the coming months. Uh, Pune, Millennium Towers, and Chennai, we've not yet started leasing, but we've started uh, inviting, uh, you know, uh, potential leads. And again, uh, I would say there's a reasonably good inbound interest from uh, a lot of tenants in these both these markets. Sure. Uh, thanks. Those were my questions, and uh, congratulations to Mr. Gupta on joining the team. Looking forward to interact with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. As that was the last question. On behalf of the Phoenix News Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.